Hi, I'm Jordan Allen, and I am a, a leader of the Integral Austin community, and um, I've recently been traveling around and circling a lot. And I'm Sarah Ness, and I'm a leader of the Austin Authentic community, and with Jordan have been leading circling immersions and classes in Austin and around the U.S. So for me, the, the clearest link between what is integral about circling is the essence of development, as Keegan describes it, making the subjective experience an object in our awareness. And circling is just doing that in relationship over and over and over again in the moment. So I'm just aware of, oh, this is how I am subjectively, and I'm looking at it, and all these people are reflecting back what it looks like to them, to me, so I get to see it more and more from all these different angles, and then disembed myself from that and ha inhabit a larger space. Mm -hmm. And what I've found is when I first began doing authentic relating and circling work, I didn't have the distinction of integral, but I found myself able to be able to take more and more perspectives, both in myself and in the group as a whole in leading authentic relating events. Like I can feel my own experience and then I can start to distinguish emotions and then I can start to distinguish the texture of different sensations and how those are all influencing each other and then how those are influencing my connection with somebody else and the group. What are you distinguishing more more. right now? Um, nervousness, mostly. You seem a bit shy. And excited. I feel like I'm on camera. <laughs> <laughs> How odd. <laughs> I can distinguish sarcasm. <laughs> Another clear link to me, and I like you talking about the personal experience, because I think that our growth is evident, and if you, and I hope that if you watch a video that we make in a year, you'll see the same thing. You'll, mm -hmm. It'll just be amazing that this practice actually Ironically, because like the, one of the deepest commitments for me is really to just love what is in the moment, to really be okay with what arises, even if it's defensiveness, even if it's disconnection. But the irony or the paradox, it's so beautiful, about, so integral about it in that way, is that massive growth occurs in being able to just sit with whatever is. And to me, that's actually part of the subject-object distinction, mm. is that the way... I, and I think a lot of us have been brought up, is to see the past and the future and never really get to be in the present. So even to distinguish what I'm feeling right now, to feel my whole body, to feel the connection. For you a minute ago to say, I like that you brought it back to individual experience, is making, you know, making myself the subject of my own experience as it's happening right now. And that, to me, has actually required development to get to understand. We could nerd out for more. Should we keep going? Jason, behind the camera. Okay. Um, I, I was going to um, say something about the altitudes as well, if please. that works. One thing that I have really loved about combining integral with circling and learning more integral theory as I've been circling is getting to use the different maps to help me see people as perfect wherever they're coming from. Mm. So I can judge somebody for staying in, in story, like talking about something rather than just being in their experience of it. But if I understand the need for rationalization in a certain frame of development or as I see it, then I can be much more empathetic to what their experience is and meet them where they're at and share honestly how that's affecting me. When, when you're saying that, I'm like trying to let go of whatever plan I thought I might say and like really stay with the moment of what arises in connection with that. <laughs> and uh, when I got past what I was thinking of saying, what comes up to me is this, that this is a real gift to the integral community because I certainly feel very guilty of, of using the map to judge other people. And I, I see that a lot as well. And being able to kind of twist that and 
not just in a psychoanalytical way, like, oh, I must be projecting upon them, and so this must be something about me that I need to grow, or whatever, but actually just feel what is it like in me to be with somebody who's totally egocentric in the moment? Or what is it like for me to be egocentric and be loved that way? Or, or loved in the sense that maybe Sarah's going to say, you're pissing me off right now. And it's like this brilliant, beautiful honesty. Mm-hmm. So I think the gift for me is just that it allows us to be so much more embodied and to really live what we talk about. It's not just a map. It's a, it's a life. And I feel, like, excited and bubbly and, like, potential energy all over my body right now because what it comes back to to me is just getting to love people more Mm. and accept them and getting to use a map that has to do with distinctions to see people as even more whole and complete through really getting to know what the world is like for them is just the most beautiful thing I can imagine. Mm. Yeah. I think that's something that, you know, that's kind of, for me, always present. We can talk about the four quadrants of, of this or, the, or how it plays out the altitudes, but, like, there's this... For me, there's a thread of love that's just at the center of my life. And even when we talk about like the evolutionary process, or like an evolutionary spirituality, uh, a lot of times we'll talk about, yeah, like that, that love, it's eros that kind of moves us forward. There's the kind of mass, there's the, you know, the eros and the agape, they're both these forms of love. And I think circling, as you've said, like really highlight both of those. The, the movement and things constantly changing and, and also that just really being willing to sit with what is. What is for you right now? Thinking that what I just said was a bunch of mumbo jumbo. <laughs> <laughs> I got a little bit lost. I was still feeling excited and just wanting to stay with that. Yeah, in the moment I wish I could, I'm a bit regretful, wishing I could be more eloquent, wondering if I'm enunciating enough. Feeling shy and proud. I just feel warmth. Just getting to hear what your experience is. I can hear hear all the words, and then I can feel you. And I know we're supposed to be talking integral, but somehow it's like I can have those maps in my mind and the connection is what feels really good. This symbol meant wrap it up. Oops. <laughs> How long ago was that given? <laughs> Just bring it home. <laughs> I was trying to with my mumbo jumbo. <laughs> um, How did it hmm. feel to... Well. Hmm. This might be a bit risky of a seed to plant. But it could be a cool way to wrap it up and bring it home. There's, obviously, from an integral perspective, a real strong desire to keep growing and evolving. And I think that circling can be one of the ingredients that pushes us from integral to construct aware, Mm -hmm. from teal to turquoise. And there's a way that when we're talking about loving what is, it can be totally green. Like, oh, yeah, just accept all the perspectives, blah, blah, blah. But there's also a way that, can, that it can actually be, like, two levels higher. And it doesn't happen every circle or most circles. And I can't even necessarily say, like, I could tell you when it is. But, but I've, I've definitely, like, read Suzanne Kirk-Greuter's work about, oh, here's what it's like to be construct aware and then like had flashes of the oh this is what that piece of literature meant in my experience in the circle so I don't know maybe it's a bit arrogant to say but far be it from an integral person to be uh, labeled as arrogant (laughs) (laughs) I got curious if it was something that either you could give an example for or we could get into. Hmm. 
metaphor I've been using is that, and I know where this is not this at all, but um, there's the integral mindset, this third person kind of working on the system. It's like you're going into a dark kitchen, tripping over something, pulling out a flashlight, and then like disassembling whatever it is you tripped on and then rebuilding it in a way that you won't trip over it again. And that's also like a therapeutic modality from an integral point of view. And to me, circling at its best is just flipping on the light in the kitchen so that you can just walk around whatever's there. Or, oh, this chair's flipped over. I just need to pick it up. I don't need to Mm -hmm. rebuild it. And what comes to me is also the beauty of circling is that it doesn't happen alone. Mm. I'm flipping on the light in the kitchen but there's a party going on in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> I think that brought it home. <laughs>